Welcome back. I'm Tyler. You're watching Scarfing Scarves and welcome to another installment of I'm Telling Tyler, our write-in series where you can send me the latest tea, ask me questions, and so long as it's at least Lolita adjacent, you can send your tea and or queries to I'm Telling Tyler at gmail.com. Let's go to our first submission from someone we are going to call Turnip. I don't know if I've used the name Turnip before, but I just feel like this person is a turnip. Hi Tyler, I decided to share my situation with you after I watched your video on supportive spouses. That will probably give you an idea of where this is going, but bear with me. So I've been interested in Lolita fashion since I was around 10, but really couldn't afford to buy expensive clothes that I just grow out of as a kid. Now I'm 17 and a friend of mine reignited the burning passion for frilly lace dresses and puffy petticoats that was laying dormant in my heart. The two of us have been pawing through Lace Market, Taobao, and plenty of other Lolita outlets online for months now. I'm pretty good at saving money, and I finally found something that I was really in love with to spend it on. So far, I have a JSK and two-piece skirt and vest set. When I first purchased the JSK, it was like a dream. I saw it on Lace Market, and I immediately fell in love. Sure, I might have spent $140 on it, but that JSK was worth every single penny. When it arrived and I first put it on with the only petticoat I had at the time, which was a Black Leg Avenue Crunchy Tool travesty, I know no, sue me, and I cried. It was so special and magical, and I was the happiest I've been in a long time. The only issue is, it arrived a day early. Usually that's great, but my boyfriend of almost one year was there at the time. I was planning to open it alone without him, but there was no way I was going to be able to hold myself back. I knew he didn't really like the concept of Lolita because we had talked about it a few times but I thought he'd get excited over actually seeing the dress and how happy it made me. My boyfriend laid on the bed next to where I opened the dress and jumped around in tears, giggling like a clinically happy person. He just sat there silently scrolling through his social media. I was disappointed that he couldn't even pretend to be happy for me. It made the entire experience feel a little bittersweet. I asked him to lace up the back of the dress for me and he obliged, albeit a little begrudgingly. I twirled around and reveled in the moment of wearing my first dress for the first time. I asked him how it looked because he wasn't saying anything. He told me I look nice and the dress was good, but it was obvious that he was just trying to appease me. That event set the tone for how the rest of this story goes. My love for Lolita fashion only grew from then and quickly grew to a point where I would check Lace Market multiple times a day for new listings. My family all would join in and look at dresses and engage with me about it. My mom would, and still does, sit down with me and tell me about how she loves certain dresses and thinks they would look really good on me. She listens to me talk about Lolita and ask questions. She really wants to understand me. My sister was the one who got me into Lolita initially. She helps me buy things off Lace Market and will have long in-depth conversations about the dresses we like. All in all, I couldn't ask for a more supportive family and I'm very grateful, but I can't say the same about my boyfriend. Sometimes he'll say okay things about Lolita, but those things are far outweighed by the negative things he says. He told me he thinks I'm wasting my money, he makes fun of me, and he can't say anything positive about any of the dresses I show him. I've given up on asking what he thinks about dresses I like, as I'll get one of three responses. Usually it's just a grunt or nonchalant noise to acknowledge me, so I'll go away. Almost as likely as him outright saying the dress is ugly, and very rarely, he will say a dress is decent. At this point, he acts exasperated when I try to talk about it. I've tried to talk to him about how I feel like he isn't supportive of my hobbies, but that conversation was a flop. He said something along the lines of, what other hobbies do you have that I don't support besides pretty dresses? And I couldn't answer him because that really is the only significant hobby I have. He doesn't try to act like he cares. He doesn't like it and it shows. He can't even be happy that I have something I truly love and enjoy. I kind of gave up on trying to share any of the Lolita related things I like with him. It really makes me feel depressed, especially considering that I try to be as supportive of his hobbies as possible. He really loves MTG, Magic the 
Gathering and wanted me to play with him. Even though I don't like card games and tabletops, I learned all the rules and played with him. And to my surprise, I ended up enjoying it. I play all the video games he likes so we can enjoy them together, even if I don't like the games and he always beats me. I just like spending time with him and seeing him be happy doing the things he loves. That in itself is fun. I'm only writing this because of something that happened today. A little while ago, I found a dress I really, really love. Like we're talking dream dress here. It's AP Melty Whip Chocolate, and I'm absolutely obsessed. I've been talking about it to my sister and my friend a lot, all about where I can get it, which colorway is the best. I personally like ivory, but Mocha is gorgeous too. And this afternoon he said, you've been talking a lot about this dress and I don't even know what it looks like. I didn't show him before because it's special to me and I didn't want it to be trampled all over by him. But this was the first time he'd explicitly asked me to see a dress. So I went ahead and showed him hoping he might actually like it. He took one look at it and told me it was one of the ugliest dresses I've shown him, not cute at all, that it would look terrible on me, and no, I didn't ask for his opinion. He continued to get upset that I was kind of mad about him saying those things to me. I was gobsmacked. He knew I loved that dress, yet he still felt like it was his right to rip it to shreds. And then he expected me to just take it. I really love him and I don't want to break up with him, but it really hurts that he won't support me at all. I don't know what to do at this point, so I'm just trying to make things work. Thanks for listening, Tyler. Your videos help me realize that this isn't okay, and I'm really grateful for that. Oh, wow, where do I begin? I barely got through reading this without wanting to throw my computer at the wall. I'm trying to think of a way to parse it out that isn't just break up with him or push him <laughs> into an active volcano, because like, this is not how you treat someone that you love. And I know you're young. I feel like you said you were 17. Yes, now you're 17, that is so, so young and I know how intense love is at that age. It is incredibly intense because usually it's one of your first, if not your first true experience with love. It's around that age range in between like 14 and 18, you get some serious intense introductions into what love feels like, what love is, what love isn't. It's really hard for me not to get angry with how he's treating you and default into you need to chuck him into a wood chipper. Honestly, I'm trying to think of a response that isn't just active volcano related. In order to push this towards somewhere that makes sense, we're going to run through a summary of what you told me, all right? We're also gonna make sure there's not hair in my mic. So what's happened here is essentially you've recently had your passion for Lolita reignited. You own a JSK, which you love, and a skirt and vest set. So you've already invested money into this. You're showing that you're serious. You have a very supportive family, which is fan fracking tastic. But, huge but, your boyfriend is not on board. And I would honestly, I would say more than that, your boyfriend is a giant tool. I'm so sorry. I'm I know you say you love him and you wanna make it work, but you know what? A relationship can only work if someone is willing to work on it with you. And it sounds like out of the two of you, you're you're a little more mature than him. Now, obviously I don't, I don't have all the details. What I do have is that every time you've talked to him about something that you're incredibly passionate about right now, something that makes you happy, that makes you excited and brings joy into your life, he has acted either disinterested or outright hostile. Meanwhile, on the flip side, you have taken the time to invest in his hobbies and do what he wants to do, whether you were interested initially or not. So it sounds to me, in summary, that I'm looking at a relationship where you are putting in a lot more time and effort and emotional energy than he is willing to reciprocate for you. What makes this worse for me is that you have attempted to have a conversation with him about how him disrespecting your passions hurts you and you don't appreciate it. And you said that conversation was quote, a flop. The fact that you have even come to him with that level of maturity and he was not willing to meet you at that bare bones minimum of two people in a relationship working out their differences speaks volumes. What speaks even louder, and we're talking megaphone levels, is you saying the things he says about Lolita 
in a negative light far outweigh anything positive. And you go on to say that he tells you he thinks that you're wasting your money, he makes fun of you, and he can't say anything positive about any of the dresses you show him. To the extent that you have given up on showing him dresses that you like. I really want to dig into the point where he is making fun of you. And the part where you say when you bring it up at all now, he just acts exasperated. This is so fucking selfish and it is infuriating me. Like I have, I have a few rage buttons. This one took a jackhammer to it. I know you're trying to make it work and it's just, it's really, really, really hard for me not to go scorched earth on him right now. And I might give up in a few seconds and just do it anyway. But in the interest of helping you because you, you did, you did come to me saying that you're trying to make things work. You're trying to get this off your chest and you probably want a little feedback. So in the interest of helping you, quote unquote, make things work, I will say to you now, from what I know, the only way things are going to work is if he's willing to come to the table and understand that what he's doing is horseshit. Because you have put yourself out there for his hobbies. You have put yourself out there for his interests. You have given him your emotional energy and time and attention, and he is giving you nothing in return. And that is completely unfair. That is not how you treat someone that you care about. So if this relationship is to survive, it's not even about the frilly dresses, it's about bare bones, minimum respect. This is a person you're dating, you're in a relationship. This is the bare minimum you can expect from someone that you have decided to share a very intimate part of yourself with. When you're in a relationship with someone like that, they get to know parts of you that the rest of society isn't privileged to know. You should only give pieces of your soul to people who will treat them well. It's one thing to have different interests. Your partner having different interests from you is inevitable. I mean, most people are not carbon copies of each other. There are, there are couples like that. But for the most part, two different people are gonna have two different sets of interests. But the key part is if you truly love or care for your partner, you're going to be interested in, at least on a surface level, in what makes them happy. It doesn't mean that, you know, if they're a Star Wars fan, you're going to immediately go out, buy a bunch of merch and decorate the whole house with it, even though you could give two shits about Star Wars. It means that when you see them talk about Star Wars or you look at them buying Star Wars merch or what have you, you're going to be happy for them. You said that yourself, that you enjoy seeing him happy and participating at least in a surface level in his passions because you think that it is healthy and normal to enjoy seeing your partner enjoy things. A point you are correct on, that is healthy and normal. What is not healthy and normal is letting someone trample all over your efforts, suck up all your emotional energy and make off like a bandit in the night. That is not healthy, that is not normal. And I hate to tell you this, sweetheart, but I hate him. I hate him with a fiery burning passion and there is a, there is a very personal reason for that my ex was a lot like that when it came to Lolita. He, I'm, I'm gonna make this about me for just a second, but I swear there'll be a point. His family hated Lolita. He hated Lolita. And he just loathed every minute that I talked about it or wore it. I will tell you at the barest minimum, that did not make for a healthy relationship. It did not make for a happy relationship. Honestly, come to think of it, I was around the same age you are at the time. When I first started dating him, I was around like 16. I stayed with him for three years because it was my first relationship and I was stupid. When you're at that age, you think that person is the one, it's the one, they're the one. That's just how it is. That's how I was. That's why I stayed with him for three years. It was my first boyfriend ever. And we had a three year relationship and I'd invested a lot of time and emotional energy into that relationship. But at the end of the day, if someone is not willing to at least bare minimum invest a little bit of their emotional or attention energy into something that brings you this much joy, how much do they really value you? Given the selfish behavior that I have seen him exhibit through your message, what is gonna happen when something way more serious comes up and he refuses to invest any of his energy or his emotional attention on you while at the same time demanding or expecting you to sacrifice in your life 
in your work, in your relationships with friends or family. I know these are supposed to be funny, but this, this just pushes a rage button for me. It really does. It takes me back to when I was the same age as you, putting up with a boyfriend who had decided that the most exciting thing in my life, the only thing at the time, because I was in a pretty dark place, the only thing at the time that brought me any kind of joy, a kind of ray of light in the dingy underbelly of the emotional box that I had shoved myself into. He couldn't even bring himself to support that, knowing how much pain I was in and allowed his family to socially abuse me to my face without defending me, to have his mother look me in the eye and tell me I looked like a freak. Those types of actions or inactions, they add up. They will slowly creep and crawl and build up inside of you and within your relationship and they will poison it and it will poison you. Your life has just begun. There are so many opportunities and experiences that you are going to have. And he is not the only person who will love you or understand you or care for you. And there are so many out there that would make this boy look like chump change. And I know that personally because I've had that same experience of thinking he was the one, he was the only one who was nice to me, he was the only one who would ever date me because I was so ugly and broken and twisted and wrong. And I know you haven't said that you have any issues like this, like maybe, maybe you're one of the unicorns who has solid mental health and a decent social standing, but I feel like you've invested in this relationship through sunk cost fallacy. I feel like you are seeing things in him that he is not reciprocating properly. You've essentially, you've spent a lot of time in this relationship and you've built it up as something that's important as a relationship should be, but he's not willing to do the same for you. And it's scary to leave a relationship. It's scary to leave things that are familiar, especially when you're 17. God, it feels like you'll never find another love ever. And it's painful and ugly. And maybe you have to see them at school. Not right now because plague, but I promise you that if this boy will not come to the table and be on the level that you're on, by the way, because trying to communicate in that fashion with him, kudos to you. Fracking, good for you being present in the relationship, showing up and trying to salvage what you believe is a worthwhile emotional connection. This boy, unless he comes to the table and he talks to you and he absorbs the information you were telling him and makes changes. Because let me tell you, you were not in the wrong here. It is 100% his bullshit that he needs to fix. He needs a come to fucking Jesus moment. You need to leave him because it's never just about Lolita. It's never gonna just be about Lolita because this is such a surface level hobby. If he can't even support you on something as small and non-life shattering as Lolita fracking fashion, what is he gonna do when something much more serious, something much more impactful on your lives together? What is he gonna do when that happens? Is he going to maintain that selfish behavior that he has shown here in something as small as a hobby? I think all signs point to yes. So he'd better show up and make some fracking changes now and I think, I think you need to make that clear to him. If he won't give you the bare minimum basic respect that is due to someone that you're supposed to love and care for, then all he is, is wasting your time. I'll tell you flat out, when I, when I finally did get out of that relationship, which dragged on way too long, and I met my current partner of 10 years, I never in my life thought I would meet someone as supportive as kind and as decent a person as he is. In 10 years, he has never once said a cross word about any of my passions. He has never once said a cross word about how I look or how I act or what I love. And that is because he loves me. And that should not feel as amazing as it does because that should be the standard. That is the bare minimum of what you can expect from a partner that says they love you. 
if they can't manage that, they don't know what love is. And you deserve better. Sorry that wasn't very funny. I hope he comes to the table. I hope he improves himself, but he's young and he's probably gonna fuck up and it's gonna take several other relationships before he figures out his bullshit or he just continues down that path with someone else. So you bring him to the table and you tell him, ultimatum style, I'm concerned. I don't expect you to dress up with me, but I expect you to respect my passions. And if he can't do that, if he gets defensive, if he starts wiggling and worming around about how, why are you being so serious about this silly girly fashion? You need to go, you need to leave because he's not worth your fucking time. We're gonna move to the next one and hopefully that helps you turnip. I'm sorry I got real serious and took it very personally, but uh, your, your experience dug up some shit and I have no patience for it. So I wish you the best, turnip, I do. I wish you the absolute best and know that you are worth the emotional time, you are worth the emotional energy, and you are worth more than how this person is treating you. And he better fucking toe the line and come to terms with that or go kick rocks. Let's move on to the next one. The next one is from a submitter called Katie. And Katie says, Hi Tyler, I wanted to write in with a definitive question today, but the brief, concise paragraph I attempted to whip up quickly morphed into three. I've been following Lolita fashion for nearly a decade, but due to my circumstances, very unaccepting family, finances, etc., I am only able to start buying pieces now. I would love to be a part of a community and make Lolita friends, but all my efforts to find an active community in the Northeastern US have come up to nothing. Although I very well may be doing something wrong on that end. Search suggestions for group names on Facebook. The only other solution that I've come up with is to try attending a con with either a Lolita or J Fashion Focus. Maybe even an anime focused con because I've heard there is a decent amount of crossover. I'm holding back because I would have nobody willing to come with me. What are your thoughts on going alone? I would hate to invest all of that time and money to attend a con only to wander around alone the entire time. Have a few brief conversations with strangers and return home in the same position that compelled me to attend in the first place. While I know that Lolita is for everybody, my age deepens my hesitations. I'm 26 going on 27. I feel that I'm on the older side to be starting out and I fear that communities I might find will be significantly younger than me, say in high school. Such a large age gap makes me uncomfortable because I am well into legal adulthood. I am also worried that I will be a lot older than attendees at cons, which makes going alone all the more difficult. I've been casually checking out Royal Vegas Retreat because its location leads me to believe attendees would be closer to my age. Again, I know that age doesn't really matter when it comes to wearing the fashion, but I would really like to make friends that are closer to my age. I know I've probably rambled a bit, but hopefully I've been able to properly explain myself. Any advice you have would be so appreciated. Thanks, signed Katie. Okay, Katie, uh, we're gonna break those three paragraphs down into something bite-sized considering the absolute rant we just came from. My rant, not yours. You're basically saying that you're looking to join a Lolita Com, you'd like them to be around your age, and you just don't know where to begin, as well as, are you too old to start Lolita? Which is, no, Jesus. Spoiler alert on that question, no. No one is too old to start Lolita. And I know why you're nervous. Back in the live journal days, people were like, once you're 25, do you have to start wearing classic or leave Lolita? I guess everyone talked like that. I don't know what that voice was, but that that's how everyone sounded in the live journal days. True facts, no. It was common for people to think that after you were 25, you couldn't wear sweet anymore. Some people thought it was like 23. It was insane. The cold hard truth is there's no age that's too old to start wearing Lolita. Believe it or not, you have a lot of life ahead of you. And if you're going to start setting age limit barriers on things that you enjoy, then you're gonna have a long, miserable existence. And that's no fun. You could start Lolita at 100 and we would still accept you with open arms because that's how the Lolita community is. Luckily, we have moved on from the live journal days where people thought you legit had to stop wearing Lolita at 25 or turn into a classic Lolita for reasons that I will never understand. That was bullshit then and it's bullshit now. Most of the Lolita community that's been around for the past like 
like decade is in their 20s or early 30s. Like I'm in my 20s, so you are in good company. And honestly, having to worry about high schoolers, high schoolers in Lolita are actually still pretty rare. There's more of them than there used to be, but Lolita is definitely a luxury hobby that takes at least a basic job to have. And a lot of high schoolers, they just don't have enough disposable income. There's so many pieces to putting together your first cord that most teenagers are not gonna go to the hassle or the monetary expense. And if you're going to do it on the cheap, you often have to have patience that teenagers don't have. So most of us are adults with jobs. As for how you find a comm, I was gonna say you should totally go to an anime convention, but okay, let's pretend COVID isn't happening because eventually, eventually we'll get our shit together as a country. You said specifically you're in the Northeastern US and presuming that the US eventually gets their shit together and acts like all the other big boy countries who have managed not to wet the bed, conventions actually are a fantastic way to find your local community because usually there will be a Lolita tea party held by the local comm. It's usually the, the conventions will reach out to the community or the community will reach out to the convention. And usually if that convention has any kind of J fashion guests, there will usually be a tea party of some kind. And you'll be able to tell if it's ran by actual Lolitas or not by the dress code. <laughs> if it says cosplay is not allowed, if it says Lolita or OG is required, it's probably a, a legit Lolita tea party. If it says wear whatever or it has no dress code at all, it is going to be a den of cosplay chaos and you don't wanna be in that room. That's not how you find your Lolita community. That's how you end up on CGL. I have summoned them. I have so much regret. Anyway, this is post COVID advice. As far as anime conventions go, if you're in Lolita, you're going to be loud enough that you will eventually attract other Lolitas. That's just how this fashion works. And I'm saying that from my experience and from my experience pre being a YouTuber, this is not post YouTube nonsense, all right? I'm not, I'm trying to put this in a way that doesn't sound fucking full of myself, Jesus. So before, all right, I, I, wanna, I wanna hedge this. Before I ever had a YouTube channel, okay? I'm not talking about post scarfing scarves identity. Why don't you just go to a con and find other Lolitas? Like it's easy. Before I even had a YouTube channel, just wearing Lolita to an anime convention would inevitably attract other Lolitas. And I am not like the queen of socializing either. That's just how Lolita is. We, we are birds of a feather and we flock together, all right? That, I sound like an 80 year old woman. Where is my tea? I feel like there should be doilies on every surface of this room and at least 10 cats right now. But seriously, I would not worry about ending up alone at an anime convention in Lolita because that's just not how this works. Not in my experience. You will, every single time, if there is a Lolita in the vicinity, end up with at least one or two of you and you will form a small unit and you will roam the con in the safety of numbers because that's just how we operate, all right? We don't want sweaty weaves and their body paint all over our brand, okay? We move in a flock and people get out of the way. That's just how this fashion works. That's one of the benefits. You can get through a con pretty quick in Lolita. People see a hoop skirt and they part the waters like the Red Sea. It's amazing and I miss that. God, I miss places. I miss places and I miss people. I'm, I'm gonna try not to, I'm gonna try not to bring this down so much, but you asking about anime conventions makes me really want to go to an anime convention right now. And Royal Vegas Retreat, side note, they've rescheduled. It's happening and I'm going still. I'll still be there. I'm gonna go 2021, I believe November 2021. I'll put the date and the announcement on the screen. So if for some reason you decide you want to see me in person, for reasons I will never understand, I will be there. So to get back to your question, post COVID, how do we meet Lolitas? How do we join a comm? Honestly, one of the best ways to answer this question is probably just to do what you just did. Because now that you've said you're a Northeastern US Lolita, everybody and their mother is probably gonna be plugging comments down below as to what your comm is called. And if you can't get answers from there, then I suggest Big Sisters of Lolita Fashion. I bet if you asked your question there, like, hey, I'm trying to join a comm, what comm is in blank state, blank city? People could probably help you because I, I don't have all the Lolita comms in the US memorized by any means. I know a couple Canadian ones and I know Texas and Missouri and Detroit. There's probably other ones that I'm not thinking of right now. San Antonio. I'm just, I'm just naming places now because I've been stuck in my house for four months and I'm going crazy. But yeah, I would say that commenters, please, if you, viewer, person doing the viewing, know of a Northeastern US comm, maybe like 
write their name below and help help Katie find her calm. A calm for Katie. Hashtag a calm for Katie. Come together and support Katie in her search for a calm. I'm so lonely. <laughs> COVID is awful. I miss outside. I miss tea parties and I miss conventions and I miss hotel rooms and I miss airplanes and I'm gonna lose my shit. But yes, a calm for Katie. <laughs> Honestly, I hope, I hope you do find a calm. I hope hashtag a calm for Katie trends enough below that people will find you a calm to join because right now online communities and social spaces are incredibly important for keeping us sane. It obviously hasn't worked for me, but I wasn't very sane before anyway, so it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. So in summary, you're not too old. Your age is perfect. Most Lolita comms are made of adults. And you can find your community hopefully below in the comment system from people who will helpfully tell you what the Northeastern Lolita comms are. And if not, you can find it in Big Sisters of Lolita. And I hope you come to Royal Vegas Retreat. So hashtag a con for Katie and Royal Vegas Retreat, which I cannot wait to go to if the US gets their shit together before we start eating each other. So that's all the time we have for tonight. This has been Tyler. You've been watching Scarfing Scarves. And if you'd like to submit a question to whatever this is supposed to be, so long as it is at least Lolita adjacent, you can send it to imtellingtyler at gmail.com. I would like to thank my patrons for making whatever this is possible. You guys are the best. I would not be half as sane right now without you. And should you like to join their number, you can head over to patreon.com slash lastweeklolitanews. I don't recommend it, but you can. I'm going to go drink now.